and that's the indication that XP1 is clear to take uh, off. One and two, you guys set. Take one, uh, two, ready to go. Go, go, take off. So let's take advantage of this and just watch XB1 on her takeoff rule as she leaps into the air for the first ever supersonic flight of an independently developed civilian supersonic aircraft. Wow, that was fantastic. Doesn't she look gorgeous? Especially when the gear's up, she looks an absolutely beautiful airplane. And in the pilot's world, we say that if an aircraft looks right, she'll fly right. And XB-1 certainly yeah, looks right. The psychiatrists, in fact, tell us that an aircraft like XB-1 looks great and we like it because it appeals to both sides of the brain. The left side for its technology and the right side for its stunning good looks. Has she... There we are. XB-1 is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. We've got confirmation from the control room that it, she is supersonic. What a wonderful achievement. Geppetto and the whole team know what a really historic moment this is. The first civil aircraft independently constructed that has ever flown supersonic. And Geppetto is the first pilot ever to do it. It is really thrilling moment. And we can see her right now watching it. Nick, how do you feel? <laughs> Fantastic. Mike, I've been working on this program for years. Not just me. So many people have poured years worth of effort into this moment. And to just think that this is the first civil supersonic aircraft in American history. I'm just, I'm to the moon uh, excited about how well that went. We saw the Mach number lingering there a little bit. It kind of paused at 0.97. We actually expected that. We talked about that in this morning's brief, uh, how sometimes the air data doesn't really know what to do with that onset of the shock wave when it actually hits Mach 1. But then it, it came back. It, uh, we saw 0.04, I think, was the first indication. But here we are at Mach 1, 1.1. Uh, Airplane looks great, and they're into testing. Flying supersonically, what's the experience like? Well, from my experience on Concorde, there's absolutely no physical sensation once you're supersonic. There's also no physical sensation of going through the sound barrier. When a plane's traveling at faster than the speed of sound, and today it's up around about 770 miles per hour, you really don't realize it. And yet, today, for instance, uh, XB-1 is traveling so quickly that a distance like that between, say, San Diego, and San Diego and Los Angeles could be covered in just a mere 10 minutes. She's actually far, flying faster than the Earth rotates. She's going so quickly that, that the sun is going literally backwards in the sky. It's quite an amazing experience. And yet that's the really clever thing that the aviation engineers succeed in doing, to make the experience so that... Uh, an aircraft can do all of this while the passengers are just sitting in comfort and even sometimes they have to put indicators in the cabin to make sure that the customers do know that the aircraft is flying supersonically. So Nick, I mean, tell us a little bit more about what's going on for this stage of the testing. Yeah, it looks like we, we're just kind of flying straight and level, but I can tell you there's a flurry of activity happening in the control room right now. Uh, the flutter engineers, we just activated what we call the flutter excitation system, and the loads and dynamics team within the control room are looking at the data about how air, the aircraft structure, uh, when it's vibrated, how it interacts with the airflow on condition supersonic Mach 1.1. So they're, they're actively monitoring that uh, aero, we call aero servo elasticity is the dynamic of the aircraft structure. Uh, that's what they're focused on. As soon as that flutter test is complete, we're going to enter uh, a, a phase that we call a flying qualities, handling qualities block. And that's evaluating how XB1 is to fly. The flying qualities portion relates to the hands-off behavior of the aircraft. Geppetto will actually disturb the airplane and roll pitch and yaw, and then uh, he'll get 
actively in the loop for the handling qualities block and test what it's like to maneuver. Yeah, I'll just say right now, we, uh, we've we decelerated back from the speed of sound, and the reason I believe that is is for airspace considerations, which um, we only have a limited amount of airspace to work with here, which uh, kind of limits how much testing we can get done on any one pass. Two, one, mark. So that's the mark for Geppetto to select the undercarriage down. Here she comes. And we'll get verification from both Geppetto and the control room here. Mark, dampers on, fuel systems auto, anti-skids auto, 170. That's the landing control. checklist that they just completed. Yep. Looks like good gear, Mike. Uh, as a landing gear designer, my heart melts every time I see that gear come out. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. And this is a really special landing gear, isn't it? It is. It's Yeah, it bespoke for XP1. It was a custom gear. It's, uh, so we're, we're probably about a six mile uh, from, from landing now. I would expect that LSO to take over the comms here momentarily. Uh, and that'll, that'll be exciting to listen to. So I, let, let's listen into the LSO comms. Yeah, I just want to mention we have two LSOs who have supported us on this mission. Uh, Zach Pleiss, uh, call sign Sprite, again, a former naval aviator. And Charles Wickware, uh, call sign Wignut. I believe we're hearing to hear uh, Charles on the on the comms today would be my guess. Um, but both of them are here today. Uh, it's a big flight, and, and obviously, uh, you know, we all want to be a part of it. So what, what we'll be listening for is Paddles' contact in a, in a very nice, calm, friendly voice. And then you'll hear Paddles giving advice to Geppetto about being on glide path, on center line, or maybe even slightly above or slightly below or slightly left or slightly right. Uh, and geppetto has got enough experience uh, flying XB-1 and the XB-1 simulator. He's got many, many hours. Hundreds of landings. Yeah. 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 So he'll be really familiar with this. So it's just an additional uh, piece of assistance for him to get the right approach path and the right speeds. Yeah, yeah. XB-1 is a, is a test aircraft, and so this is a brand new system. There it is. We'll listen in. Edwin, seven strong glide slope, strong center line. That's 1.8. So you have glide slope center line and... and Test given the uh, 1.8 fuel call. And you can see there like a difference between the angle of attack of XB1 versus the <laughs> the Mirage next to it. A little high coming down on center line. Like those airplanes are flying the same speed, uh, in both in the same descent, and uh, and one of them is substantially yeah. nose up. High coming down on center line. That high angle of attack, a characteristic of the Ogive Delta Wing. Concord had a high landing uh, angle of attack. Very similar to that. And she's down right on the numbers. Absolutely beautiful. Right on the numbers, right on the center line. And I'm going to turn around and watch her <laughs> roll out down the runway. What a beautiful sight. And what a really successful day. Good breaks. Awesome. Getting a little bit of a flyby from the T-38 and the, the Mirage F-1. And so XB1, yeah, we'll continue the rollout down the runway here. You heard the good brakes call, which is always gives Nick uh, a bit of relief um, being the, the, the brakes guy at one point in time. But um, Geppetto will take it really easy. He'll, he'll roll it down the runway and just let the speed bleed. But we do have to clear the runway because we have two other aircraft uh, to recover here. Both, the, both of the chase planes uh, expect to be landing here. 